SpaceX Starship and Super Heavy. The double catch? Could it be happening soon? Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time today. We have a little bit of fireside. We're actually getting to the end of some. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day, it's a SpaceX day, and I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the double catch. I spoke about this during the last IFT test flight when it went boom, and I said it was coming, and it was coming soon, and I was reading an article, and it kinda of talks about it a little bit, and I wanna go through this with you because I think this is very, very important because the double catch is going to be the pivotal, let's say, point or moment when we go into this reusability phase where it's actually reusable. Both stages, the first and the second, the upper and the lower, the super heavy on the bottom, and of course the Starship on the top. So this is going to be, I think, a really big moment once it does happen. And I'll give you some speculation on what I think is gonna happen. This article kind of delves into it a little bit on what's going on over there as of right now. Also what's going on in Florida, and what we can expect to see in the next year or so. Before we dive into this, I just wanna say that if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with your community and like it and subscribe and do all those things. If you are subscribed, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this notification button over here and then click all. So when I go live and when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Or so YouTube says, YouTube. If you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here that YouTube did give us, thank you for that. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. The video's still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more Starlink specific content, I put together over 400 videos just for you. Link right here, don't click on it yet. There'll be a link right here, go check them out. Helpful how to's, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course the why behind all of it, because this channel has always been and always will be about the why. So let's dive right into this article. I'll give you my commentary and then I wanna hear from you down below. A double catch on the horizon, hardware on the move. In SpaceX's Starbase, Texas, the construction of Pad B marks a new chapter in space tech, focusing on enhancing rocket reusability. Hardware has moved from Boca Chica Village to the launch site, where precision installation of the catch arms for mid-air rocket capture is underway. This setup, potentially spanning days or even weeks, relies on a temporary structure for stability. The evolution of the catch arms. The catch arms for Pad B are notably shorter than those on Pad A. This isn't about improving accuracy. Rather, it's a response to the remarkable precision already achieved in previous catches. The accuracy has been so impressive that SpaceX can now afford to make the arm shorter, simplifying the design and potentially reducing the weight and complexity of the system, catching successes and future plans. SpaceX successfully captured the Super Heavy booster during Flight 5 and Flight 7, demonstrating the effectiveness of their innovative arm technology. The next goal is to capture the upper stage, Starship, although this plan has been slightly delayed following the anomaly of Flight 7. Boom. <laughs> I love it's always an anomaly. No, the damn thing exploded. The focus is now on making this a regular occurrence, enhancing the efficiency and cost effectiveness of space travel. Pad B, a new standard. Pad B isn't just a repeat of Pad A, it introduces a new launch mount, signifying SpaceX's commitment to evolving their launch infrastructure. This development paves the way for potentially more frequent launches and refines operations at Starbase. Florida's role in the future. While Texas takes center stage, Florida isn't far behind in SpaceX's grand plan. Back in 2019, SpaceX began constructing another tower at LC-39A only to pause for a focus on Texas. Now, with ongoing expansions at the Roberts Road facility, there's a fresh opportunity for Starship operations in Florida. 
Here, components are being prepared, not for local use, but for their journey to Starbase, Texas. That's important. A lot of the things that are going on, a lot of the development, a lot of the work that's being done in Florida is actually for making parts that are ferried to Texas as of right now. That will change. Operational shifts and up and coming missions. As Pad B nears completion, expected within the next few months, SpaceX is set to move its primary operations there, allowing for upgrades on Pad A. This strategic move could greatly accelerate Starship's development and testing. Anticipation grows for Starship Flight 8, slated for February contingent on FAA approval. Both the Starship and Booster are ongoing their final tests, with static fires anticipated soon, each step bringing Starship closer to full operation. And as the sun sets on Starbase, the silhouette of Pad B stands as not just a testament of human ingenuity, but as a beacon for the future. A future where the stars are no longer just points of light in the sky, but destinations within our grasp. Absolutely. Very, very interesting what they're talking about here. And I'm really excited about the idea that we're going to see a double catch in the not so distant future. So the question is, when? Well, like they're saying in this article, they're going to complete Pad B. And when Pad B is done with the smaller arms, Mechazilla arms, they're going to then move to upgrading Pad A. Once both of them, Pad A and Pad B are done, fully operational with the new arms and the new cartridge and everything else, that is when we're going to see a double catch. Now, the question is, when do we think that that's going to happen? I'm going to venture to say that we're going to see it by IFT 10. IFT 8 will happen now in February, then we'll see an IFT 9, and then finally IFT 10. I would say probably mid-year, maybe June, July, August, right around there. Let's say second quarter, we're going to see a double catch. I'm really, really super excited for that. That is going to be monumental. Can you even imagine catching the Super Heavy over here and then minutes later catching the Starship over there? True reusability. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. The other thing that I am excited about I've been excited about this once they started talking about it in 2019, is the development of the Starbase Florida. I cannot wait for this, guys, because that Starbase is only about three hours up the road from me. So once Starbase is here in Florida and Starships will start launching from here, I'm going to be traveling up there more frequently and I'm going to give you real-time coverage of what's going on. I am stoked about that. It's very difficult for me to travel 23 hours to get to Texas to cover something by car to bring all the equipment and whatnot. But to do it here, just three hours up the road, this is going to be massive, absolutely massive. So what they're doing is they're taking the large components being made here in Florida and then ferrying them from Cape Canaveral down the east coast of Florida, around the peninsula, and then into the Gulf of America to Texas and that's where they're being used obviously in the star base or at the star base at Boca Chica. So once this change is made, instead of them just making parts here in Florida, they're going to actually have a star base here. And what is my understanding, what Elon said last year is his idea is that all testing will be done in Boca Chica in Texas, but all commercial launches of Starship are going to happen here at Cape Canaveral, the Kennedy Space Center on the Space Coast. So this is going to be, once again, really, really great for me. I'm excited about it because I'm so close. I am so close. So seeing that the commercial will be launching from here and the test flights from there, I'm okay with that. Even if we can get to maybe one launch per month or even one launch every other month, I will definitely travel up there, get a hotel, and do some coverage right from the launch sites. Once again, I have not been able to do it going to Texas. It's just simply too far to carry and lug all the gear and all the rest of the stuff. It just doesn't make sense. So anyways, I hope that you find this interesting because I really do. It shows how far they have come, but where they're going. And they're going there really quickly. 
So seeing that the Mechazilla arms are now little T-Rex arms, right? Instead of these massive arms is kind of interesting. That means that they're doing these catches so accurately, they don't need these mega arms. It's just not necessary. They're literally capturing this thing like to an inch. It's just crazy. The accuracy on such a massive, massive thing. It's like, what, 30 some stories tall, this massive unit and it lands within inches. Absolutely crazy, absolutely nuts, but they do it. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna put those smaller arms and the new cartridge and whatnot on the new pad B, and then they're gonna retrofit pad A or do the upgrade on pad A while they're using pad B for doing the capture of Super Heavy. Once they're both operational, like I said before, that's where we're gonna see the double catch. And that, once again, I'm stoked for. What say you? Down below, I would like to hear from you. What do you think about all of this? Think it's cool? Think it's nonsense? Do you think it's fake? Do you think it's all green screen and there is no rockets and all those satellites are up there on balloons? I get these comments all the time, guys, all right? I'm not joking. Anyways, thank you for being here. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, do all of those things. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools and my merch and my tees and my shirts and my cups and my books and everything else. Go over there, check it out. And if there's something there that you like, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.